type dispatching is a technique for defining generic functions. So what's the problem so far? Well, we have rational numbers and we have complex numbers, but how do they relate to each other? We've gone to great lengths to establish the independence of different data types. So data abstraction and class definitions keep the rational class and the complex classes different from each other. But these are things that can interact. So some operations need to cross those type boundaries. So we have add rational and mole rational, which operate on rational numbers, which know that rational numbers are numerators and denominators. We have add complex and mole complex, which know that complex numbers are two dimensional vectors. But what happens if we want to add a rational number to a complex number? Well, then we actually need to know both of these things. So it would be nice to have all of our program live up here and never have to know the representation of either of these numbers. But if we want to do something that combines one of these with one of these, well, all of a sudden we're going to need to know about both representation, representations at the same time. So how do we add complex and rational numbers together? Well, let's try to use type dispatching. So there are many different techniques for doing this, but here's one. Define a different function for each possible combination of types for which an operation is valid, such as addition. So let's just create some helper functions that we'll use. One tells us whether z is a complex number. Another tells us whether z is a rational number. And here we're just comparing the type of z to various classes. So there are two kinds of complex numbers, one type of rational number, and then we need to define a function that combines a complex and a rational number. And this is the one function that gets to know about both representations. So add complex and rational takes a complex number z and a rational number r, and it computes the sum, which is a complex number whose real component is the real component of z plus a rational number expressed as a floating point value. So in order to combine with this real component, we're going to have to actually divide the numerator by the denominator, which might give us an inexact representation. We'll add that in as a real component because rational numbers never have any imaginary component. And then the imaginary part is just whatever z's imaginary part is. So we have converted to a real number here, a float, and um, then we can define a function that adds two numbers, which could either be complex numbers or rational numbers. And here's how we do it. So type dispatching means look at the type of the arguments and do different things depending on their type. It's a pretty straightforward idea. So we're going to add z1 and z2, which may be complex or rational, by just testing what they are and doing the right thing in each case. So if z1 is complex and z2 is complex, then we'll just add them as if they're complex numbers. Otherwise, if one is complex and the other is rational, then we'll call add complex and rational, which we just defined. Now what if the first one's rational, the second one's complex? Well, we can still use this function, but just pass in z2 as the complex number and z1 as the rational number. Why is that? Well, addition is commutative. It doesn't matter what order we put these things in. And finally, if we know that they're not both complex and it's not the case that one is complex and the other is rational, well then they're both rational, at least assuming that they're just the types we've created so far. And so we'll call add rational to add those together. Okay, so that was type dispatching using a big conditional statement. There are ways to clean it up a little bit. Let's look at another way of doing type dispatching. So the same basic idea, look at the type of something and decide what to do. But this time we'll use some tags in order to simplify what's going on. So we'll use a dictionary to dispatch on pairs of types. And that dictionary will hold pairs of types as the key. And then as the value will be the function that actually does the addition. So here's part of the implementation. We're going to define a function type tag, which takes in some x 
and returns whatever's in the type tags dictionary for that type. And what are those type tags? Well, the point of type tag is that it gives the same value for both complex RI and complex MA. Namely, that we call it something complex. We'll use a short string because we need to use pairs of these in order to define what functions to actually call when we want to add two numbers together. Okay, rational we'll call rat. The point of this is that complex R and complex MA should be treated the same when it comes to addition. And then, how do we actually add two numbers together? Well, first we have to get their type tags. So the type tag of Z1 is computed, the type tag of Z2 is computed. That's stored in as types, which is a tuple of different com or rat strings. Then we can look up in a dictionary of implementations for addition, these types, and then call that function on Z1 and Z2. So I said I need a type tag function, which returns the result of looking up in the type tags dictionary, not X, but the type of X, where type tags is a dictionary that contains complex RI, which is a complex, complex MA, which is another type of complex number, or finally, rational, which is a rational number. Okay, now that we have type tags, we can define what it means to add two numbers together. We have to get the types of those numbers, which involves calling type tag on Z1 and Z2. And then returning whatever we get from looking up in the add implementations. These types and then calling a function on Z1 and Z2. Okay, so this call here indicates what's in the add implementations dictionary. It's going to have tuples of types such as com com as keys, and the value is gonna be functions of two arguments that actually perform addition. So how do we add two complex numbers together? We call add complex. How do we add together a complex number and a rational number? Well, we call the function that we defined before, add complex and rational. And what if we have a rational and a complex number? Well, then we want to add rational and complex. And finally, what if we have two rational numbers? We can just call add rational. And we're done. Except for the fact that we haven't defined in this file add complex and rational. So let's do that. Z and R can be added together by returning a new complex number. We add together the real part of Z and a floating point representation of R, and then keep around the imaginary part of Z. And then how will we add rational and complex? Well, that's straightforward. We can just return add complex and rational on Z and R. Okay, so we've written a fair amount of code. Let's make sure it works. And we'll do that by creating half and creating Z is a complex number. So what is this Z? Well, the real component is two and the imaginary component is two as well. So what happens if we add half and Z? We should get two and a half as the real component and two as the imaginary component. And you can just ignore that a little bit at the end. That's because of rounding pairs with this finite representation of pi. 